Going to the agenda, uh, we try uh, to cover in the agenda the, the issues that were raised as uh, uh, to be discussed, uh, raised by the member states as something to be discussed in a more, let's say, with more time and explaining the reasons to do uh, in one way or another, uh, the, to explain our choice. Um, and we uh, give uh, the floor uh, with uh, short presentations normally to the person that is the contact point for the thematic working groups dealing with those issues. Only in two cases we invite experts that are working on the thematic working groups to present uh, the subject. And this is the case for uh, Habitats Biodiversity, which is, will be presented by Dirk. He's, uh, he's working involved on the Inspire Data Specification since Protected Sites, or the next one and is the, 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 currently the facilitator of the thematic working groups dealing with these three teams. And also, uh, Catherine Slider, that is, uh, as she said, uh, during the presentation, is also involved on the thematic working groups uh, for Annex 2 and 3, and in particular, uh, developing the document that we have uh, submitted for the consultation as D2.9, so observations and measurements. Uh, going back uh, to the presentation, so we have a new view in the Commission. We have new slides for us to present, so you will see repeating uh, uh, these uh, this slides several times. So what are the main objectives for our workshop? Um, with this workshop, you are going to explain and to clarify why INSPIRE data specifications development must consider thematic reporting, how INSPIRE data specifications deal with thematic reporting, to provide the main principles used, <clears throat> to present the different examples that illustrate such principles, and to identify the next steps in the, within the INSPIRE maintenance frame. So, as I said, the agenda is uh, constructed on that, uh, with that aim. We had uh, another other business at the end of the agenda in which we want to inform you about the INSPIRE conference, about the last developments of the abstract test suite uh, the, that was something uh, remaining from the next one to be done, and now we have um, the work to, to present, and also to inform, if you agree, on the European, um, European Union location framework. We have here a colleague to explain you what is it and how we are on that uh, topic. I don't know if you want to add something uh, to this point of any other business. Uh, you can uh, inform us and to us to add at the last point. Uh, we are going to discuss at the end of each presentation only the questions that are really related with that presentation, and we want to leave to the, the third part of the workshop, uh, so after lunch, the main discussions. Once we have an overall view of the issue, how it was dealt with several teams, then we can uh, bring uh, for discussion everything related with the presentation or any other uh, issue you want to raise and to discuss. So, uh, going back to my presentation again, uh, I want to explain why, oops, why uh, to consider the thematic reporting uh, within our developments. So the reasons are taken from the directive itself, where we see in the Article 3 the definition of interoperability, as the possibility of special data sets to be combined without repetitive manual intervention in such a way that the results is coherent and the added value is enhanced. And also in Article 4, where it says that uh, the directive shall cover special data sets held by or on behalf of the public authority operating at the lowest level of government within a member state, only if the member states has laws or regulations requiring their collection or dissemination. From that we derive that all transposed environmental legislation influence what is the scope of the INSPIRE directive and the implementing rules. Uh, also, if you look at the recitals, we see in several occasions, and in particular on recital 4, 
saying that the infrastructure so inspired should assist policy making in relation to policies and activities that may have a direct or indirect impact on the environment. And here we see that the reporting activities and things related with the thematic reporting are one of these uh, main uh, categories. And again, in Recital 11, where, we, where it's explained that we need to, that there exist many initiatives that are taken at national and community level, uh, those, some of those initiatives are mentioned in the directive, and then at a certain moment it says, the directive will not only complement such initiatives, but providing a framework that will enable them to become interoperable, but it will also build upon existing experience and initiatives rather than duplicate the work that has already been done. So, once more, the justification why we uh, must consider the thematic reporting as an important user requirement which we derive into use cases. Uh, don't go into detail for what is written on Recital 6, but from that it comes uh, that interoperability components that were considered within our framework documents that were the base to develop uh, the data specifications. Uh, by saying that infrastructure of special information in member states should uh, keep the data uh, and maintain the data at the most appropriate level, it obliges us to consider the object reference modeling component. And by saying that it making possible to combine special data from different sources across the community in a consistent way, we have to consider the data consistent component within uh, the interoperability components. And when saying special data collected at one level of public authority to be shared between other public authorities, it's also a base that uh, convinces that this interoperability must make use of all data that is available at the public authority level. So Article 7 is the one that is directly related with uh, the data specifications of the interoperability rules. And here again it says that this development, so the implementing rule, must be based on relevant user requirements and existing initiatives. So once again, reporting, thematic reporting is the case. So how we translate it in our framework documents, one of, the, the, one of, the, one of them is generic conceptual model, and uh, there at a certain moment is written, so when defining the scope of the INSPIRE is special data, so we know it from the directive, INSPIRE information for relevant real world phenomenon in which team, but not aim at modeling all information to execute business process, scientific simulations, or comply with reporting requirements. So uh, here we see where are the fields which are out of the scope of generic conceptual model and out of scope of data specifications in general. But it also says that where critical practicable, special object types that are important for key environmental applications should be included too. And from that we know that the, f the fact that a special object, an attribute, or results from observations are to be reported in one or another legislation frame should not exclude them from the inspired model, especially if they are to serve also other relevant use cases. So. Uh, it's from that we see that it's not an easy task to see where to stop and where to put inside the scope of the interoperability of the data specifications or out of scope. So this figure, we saw this uh, in several occasions. Um, let's say uh, updated here and there, but at, at the end, uh, this is really uh, the, the most difficult issue we have, or one of the most difficult issues we have to deal, looking at in a case-by-case -case, uh, basis, which is inside the scope and what is outside the scope, uh, which is in the scope, so the most referenced data, there is no doubt, so it's much easier to identify such special data and reference systems. What is pure business data, it's also easy to identify, and the reporting is one of these things. So what is on the reporting sheets and what is the content of the reporting for several thematic legislation 
is uh, also a part of the business data. Whatever is in the between is to be shifted in one way or another depending upon what is the situation, not only for uh, the thematic uh, legislation we are talking about or what is uh, the content for a certain application. And of course it depends um, for, on several issues. So, um, to summarize, reporting is one use case for many teams, and the reasons are explained before. The inspired data models should facilitate reporting obligations, not more than that. And reporting obligations, data flows, and reporting sheets differ among thematic legislation. This is also, also very well known. Differ in timing and maturity, and also in its relation regarding several inspired teams. From that, we can summarize three, uh, let's say, mean, uh, three main cases uh, that will be explained with the presentation that will come uh, later. So, where there are well-established data flows for reporting, Inspire Data Model is providing special objects and some joint attributes, and it can be Inspire ID, thematic IDs, it will be explained in the next presentation. Uh, to, speci to specially enable the reporting data. This is the case of uh, the statistical units. We'll see the presentation in a minute. But it also can happen that there are data flows and reporting sheets currently being de uh, defined at several stages of the development. Inspire is cooperating in that case with the responsible thematic policy working groups to ensure consistency between the member states' efforts and, uh, on the reporting and on the inspired implementation. And this is the case of several uh, domains like the, the, the WISE in general, we'll see later, Natura 2000 and so on. And the third case, uh, where reporting data flows are not or very generically defined, inspired data models may also include attributes covered by thematic legislation so that Inspire compliant data is able to support the reporting uh, at the current stage. Schematically, what I said, it's resumed like that. So we have the user requirements and the reference material we got uh, to develop the data specifications. We, <clears throat> we establish, so we define the high level uh, use cases, so the, the most common ones uh, that should become the core application schema for the team, and we also identify the reporting, uh, the, the obligations that are coming from the reporting uh, obligations, uh, sheet forms, and so on. And we have uh, from that derived the reporting application schema. Out of this, we'll have at the end a normative part, which will be in the implementing rule, that translate what is on the core application schema. And we'll have on the guidelines the informative part, uh, which is the reporting application schema. From that moment on, so once we have the implementing rule and the technical, technical guidelines clearly identified, uh, from that part, uh, which is here, starting point for discussion, it means that whatever are the evolution for the reporting obligations and whatever will be the maintenance process of the Inspire in general. So it's necessary um, dis to discuss and to collaborate to keep a coherence, although in two different tracks. So the Inspire, uh, the governance for these two processes is different, so we have uh, from one side, we have the INSPIRE with the core model, the implementing rule, and the guidelines be governed by the INSPIRE structure and uh, uh, also in the frame of the maintenance. And we have for the reporting obligations, whatever are the evolution for the reporting obligation, which is uh, translated in the thematic legislation and, and the guidelines, this is uh, under the responsibility of the thematic communities dealing with those issues and uh, the corresponding DG uh, and, and units dealing with those legislations. As I said, Inspire extension, so uh, not only the, the Inspire uh, core part and the Inspire extensions during the maintenance, uh, they will be uh, 
they should keep uh, clear related because even when we have this uh, application uh, schema for reporting as an example, it should be linked with the core data model, otherwise there are no coherence between what is asked to the member states to be done. And these thematic communities uh, which are dealing uh, with the thematic uh, reporting, the corresponding DGs and the inspired maintenance uh, groups uh, uh, should collaborate to keep certain, the, the coherence in one level or another, in one way or another. So what are the benefits that INSPIRE can provide for reporting? There are of the several types. So the, the, the one that you are dealing today is regarding the increased interoperability by providing harmonized data models for the 34 teams, so the 3NX, to facilitate the cross-domain applications and analysis, making use and integrating special data from different sources. Uh, it also uh, keep consistent reference data and location framework, make different reporting data comparable, and uh, provide consistent modeling approach, be, uh, which means having comparable data models that facilitate development of new reporting sheets, new uh, data models, whatever, and avoiding duplication and inconsistencies, and also by doing that reducing gaps. Another aspect that uh, makes reporting benefit from INSPIRE is to increase the data availability because the special data under the scope of INSPIRE are becoming available for the reporting obligations, although not directly uh, related, maybe indirectly, or necessary data for certain purpose within a certain uh, thematic domain, but also because of the obligation on sharing data and making special data available which is um, already in act by INSPIRE. Other group of benefits is the use of the infrastructure. So we have an harmonized infrastructure uh, provided by the INSPIRE, and from that, reporting can benefit from, from that through the geoportal, through the harmonized metadata, through the network services. So it means that INSPIRE lays the fundamentals for streamlining of reporting. So what are the next steps? And this is to, let's say, to use what still can be used uh, remaining from the pineapple symbol, symbol of INSPIRE. So at least the leaf we can put here and there. So what are the next steps uh, through the INSPIRE maintenance? So INSPIRE and policy support working groups for reporting should cl closely liaise and cooperate to further streamline reporting guidelines and harmonize them with the inspired data models and infrastructure. So the teams used to derive information necessary for several reporting obligations and not directly related with reporting like land use, human health and safety land cover should be maintained and further developed to better support requirements on uh, reporting. Other teams not necessarily related with reporting as well offer a good support uh, for reporting like geographic grid systems and it's already under discussion for certain groups, sea regions and so on. So next presentations will uh, go into details for those topics. Thank you very much.